Welcome to episode 73 of the Rex Chapman Show with my super dope homeboy from the Lex Town, Josh Hopkins. What up, Josh? What's happening, Rex Everett? How are you, buddy? How's it going? I'm in Kentucky. It was snowing today. Snowing? Yeah. 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 Snowman or anything? Uh, Not anything quite like that, that kind of accumulation, but uh, a uh, little so, snow. I mean, so it's sledding. that time of year. Sledding? Nah, that's, no, because it's not, if there's not accumulation, you can't. Sled. What? Who yeah, says? You sh- Who says? Uh, Mr. Physics? I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. If there's no snow, you, you, yeah, you can't sled. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that, so that's, that does make that's sense. good. Yeah. yeah that's anyway, been, that's been the weather report. <laughs> oh, um, episode 73, Josh. Mm-hmm. We're climbing, tough. creeping up there. 73. Yeah. You know any famous 73s? Old, 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 old school uh, Patriots, uh, John Hanna. John Hanna. I mean, yeah. I just remember that as a kid. Yeah, that, 73. Like, Sports Illustrated, he was on. S- Seventy-three. I don't know. I don't know any seventy-threes. Uh, um, seven, seven. Uh, I go Kevin Johnson. Mm-hmm. Uh, three. I'll go Sedale Threat. Oh, See, no yeah, wonder he uh-huh. picked that name. That uh-huh. number. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, I would go. Uh, just like if I was doing a locker, and it was like, oh, you got to remember that it would be yeah. Kenny Anderson. And the Rex Everett Chapman. Yeah, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. Forever. Oh, forever, man. my three. Forever. Oh, thank you, buddy. Um, sure. You know, something happened uh, in the basketball world. We're witnessing history in the making. LeBron James right now is chasing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's scoring title. And I can't believe that I'm saying that about anyone in this lifetime. Uh, mm-hmm. That record seemed, well... It seemed uh, out of reach for any reasonable human, and it was until LeBron James. Uh, he's not he, reasonable. He's not he's reasonable. Not reasonable. No, yeah. um, but he did something the other night in a loss uh, that was pretty remarkable. He got 46 against the Clippers in a loss, which gave him 40 points. He scored made made him score 40 points against every team in the league. <laughs> He, That's he great. Had, what a great he had stat. never He had never scored 40 against the Clippers, but doing so solidified that position. He scored 40, tor- torched every league, every team in the league for 40 at least once. That's Do you amazing. think he knew that stat going into the game? I think he probably did. Yeah? Yeah. And he just said, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. That's how good he is, too. It's like, yeah. today, I'm going to do it. I, I would think in this uh, – in this climate, this social media climate, it would be impossible for him to have not known that going into the game. Right, right, right. Uh, and he pre- he, he's sh- pretty, yeah, he's pretty on top of things anyway. Uh, I would think. Yeah, he yeah, he's up. a history buff of the league. Uh-huh. He's, he, he stays with it. You know, I, how old is he? How is he 30? If, if this is eight? his 20th year, is this make him 37, 38, I guess? 37, yeah. 38 doing that. I looked up to see his stats this year from his second year in the league. You know, mm-hmm. the first year was, you know, you gave him a, a rookie year, and then then right. he was great from then on. Yeah. He was great first year, but then he mm-hmm. was all-time great. His first year at age whatever he was, uh, he averaged 27 points, <laughs> seven and a half rebounds, and 7.2 assists, and shot 47% from the league. This, from the field. And this year he's averaging 30 points, 29.9, eight and a half uh, assists and seven rebounds, shooting 50%. I mean, that yeah. and it, every year is like, that's just greatness every year. Every Unbel- year. Not just greatness. You can't get the every year. It's kind of like those, you know, he, uh, Michael fell into the like Michael should have won MVP every year. Right, right. You Could know, have. yeah. And 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 he should have a whole bunch more. You know, he yeah. was the best player in the league many, 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 many years. Now you can argue because there's some real MVP candidates that are 20 years younger than him, but uh 15. And and so you could argue, but I mean he's still dominating at his he's age. He's dominating. Like, 
he's dominating Josh. And I, the thing that I find really remarkable is he's he's found a way to do it really in two different eras. He he started, it was a jab step yeah. league. It was a jab step league, and he dominated that. And now it's a you know, get in your bag handles league, and he's still dominating that league, has found a way to dominate that league. Uh, truly witnessing greatness. Yeah. You know, and then you see him too, because they're like, oh, he's lost this or that. But you see him get free and the way he dunks, it's like still he might not, he's got a few jumps left in him each game. Yes, he does. Like yes, he does. you get to that point, you know that point where you get to where like I got two jumps, two jumps in me. He's got five yeah. still, two full out jumps. Like it when's he, he does. When, when when do you foresee him? hanging it up because he's showing zero signs of really slowing down. I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, but I do know he's motivated to, to uh, at least play in the same league as his oldest son who just made the McDonald's game, which mm-hmm. how cool is that? And that well-deserved. So cool. And then yep. on, on top of that, uh, or in addition to that, our homeboy, Jeff Shepard's son, Reed Shepard, made the McDonald's friend of the show. game friend, friend of, of the, the show. show made the McDonald's game. And I'm so happy for that young man. Uh, and I, 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 about seven or eight years ago, I was talking to Shep one summer and he said, we just played in a, in a tournament in Ohio against LeBron's son and Reed, Reed held his own. And I remember at that point going, okay, well, let me keep an yeah. eye on old yeah. young yeah. Reed yeah. Shepard. And mm-hmm. my gosh, what a high school career he's had in the state of Kentucky. He's going to go to Kentucky next year, and we all love Shep, of course. But uh, I well, thought that was gonna, pretty cool. He's going to be an NIL magnet. Oh, my gosh. Hometown right? hero comes comes to the Cats. Here's, yes, a, here's a better LeBron because it compares him to his 2010 MVP season at 26 years old, and he's 38 years old now. 38. So uh, I'll start 27 – no, I mean, 29.7 points in 2010, 29.7 points this year. 7.3 rebounds then, 8.4 rebounds. 8.6 wow. assists, 7 assists. Shooting uh, 50% field goal uh, LeBron was then, and now I guess it's updated. He's shooting 51%. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's his MVP season in 2010, Just, and that's what he's doing. But I have another insane. great, great stat I saw on online. In Michael Jordan's last season at age 40, Mm -hmm. this shows you how the league and and thinking has changed. He played in all 82 games (laughs) and averaged 37 minutes, which would lead the NBA right now in minutes. And he played in every game. Wow. Yeah, Yeah. no load management there at 40. No, and staying staying up late, gambling and smoking cigars every night. Yep. And I'm not <laughs> saying that that's right or better. I agree. Yeah, you know, like yeah. the it's load just management different. might be something that extends people three years. So I, but I that's think probably an amazing does. stat. Amazing. I'm with, I'm with you, bud. Uh real quick, book club. Did you read anything last week? I didn't. I didn't. What about you? No. Well, that's been that's... book club. Uh we got a great guest this week, Josh. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited too. This is a former teammate of mine from way back when. We've known each other since high school days. Former number five pick in the 1990 NBA draft, 15 year NBA veteran, second team All American for the Fly and the Lion Eye and NCAA Slam Dunk champion, Kendall Gill. What's going on, Kendall Cedric Gill? <laughs> what's, what's up, Rex? Hey, can you believe back in 1990 that we think in 2024 that we'd be doing a, a podcast or, or all of this stuff that they're doing now? <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance. I was just telling Josh uh, uh, before you came on that, um, you know, we didn't really even know each other um, until Charlotte. I mean, we were in the same grade in high yeah. school, but, mm-hmm. you know, I got to UK. You didn't play as a freshman, right? Yeah, I didn't really play that much as a freshman. Though. Yeah, didn't play much as a freshman. And then yeah. uh, I left as a sophomore. And then two years later, we're, or three years later, we're teammates in Charlotte. And we actually lived together for a little bit. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I remember because I, I think I was staying at the Adams Mark uh, yep. Hotel as a rookie. And I asked Rex, I'm like, 
yo, Rex, you mind if I stay with you, man? I can't do this hotel thing. This hotel is horrible. <laughs> so, so Rex <laughs> took me in, and, and, and I don't know, we probably, I was over there probably for about three, four weeks before I got my place. So yep. I, I appreciate it, man. You made you oh, took me in, you and your parents, and made me feel at home. Man, it, it, I can't believe this this much time has gone by. The other thing that we were talking about, um, and I'm sure we'll get into it more uh, about today's game, is that uh, you know we were all young players. Myself, you, mm-hmm. we're you and I were essentially the same age. We had Dell Curry that was you know two years, three years older than us. We mm-hmm. all played the same position. We did, we, yeah. you know, we, you know, we could split it up sometimes and play the one here and there, but we all played the same position. Whereas if we played together today, we'd all be playing at the same time. I know, right? I know. Right? And, and, <laughs> that, and that's, and that was the thing, but you know what, Rex, we did play together at five stars. Yeah. But we were on the same that's team. That's right. And, and, that's and right. So, but when, when I did go to Charlotte, when, when Charlotte drafted me, I was wondering, I was like, why the hell are they drafting me? They got Rex. They got, they got, they got, Dale Curry, I mean, we all play the same position. Why? Why? Because I thought that I was either going to go to the Denver Nuggets where Chris Jackson was drafted later on Mahmoud abdul Raul, or yep. I was going to go to the Minnesota Timberwolves, one pick below with Charlotte because they had Pooh Richardson. They needed a two guard. And that's Who did the, they draft? Who did they, they draft, Felton AG? Spencer. Felton Spencer. I guess they took Felton. That's right, they from Louisville. Yeah. So, uh, but, I mean – Charlotte drafted me and I was like, okay, well, I guess I gotta go, you know. So yeah, but you know, when I when I got down there, I mean it was it was all love. Everybody was everybody worked together and uh, you know, it was just a great experience for me. Yeah. I gotta uh, tell you, Kendall, yeah. I was a I, I, so Rex and I know each other from Kentucky, but I we didn't know each other till we were adults, and I was a huge Rex fan. Like right. follow, follow him around the the mall type of guy. I was annoying. Everybody was a Rex fan, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the follow up question. First of all, I just got to tell you. So I was a huge fan of yours in college. The Flying Illini, you guys were great. You were, and you were just such a, just to go back to the old, the lexicon, so fresh. You had a great <laughs> haircut. You just look cool in your uni. You were like a fucking athletic, just the shoulders, and you could <laughs> just dunk it, shoot it, the whole thing. And I was a big fan. And then Charlotte drafted you. And then I was like, pretty I'll be sure looking motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. We can't have to take yeah, this time. <laughs> we still got it. He's hey, still hey, got it. I'm just coming back from the barbershop, too. I just got uh huh. So, uh, but I want to know, I want to know when you're, when's the first time you remember seeing Rex, hearing Rex come just into your mind, like the first time you saw him, what'd you think? And same for you, Rex, the first time you realized there was a Kendall Gill, what'd you guys think of mm-hmm. each other? Do you remember when well, that was? Well, the first time I saw Rex was at Five Star in Pittsburgh. You know, I, Rex was probably ranked, I think he was ranked third in the nation at that time. Nobody knew who I was. You know, I was just a kid that asked his mom to send him to to five star in Pittsburgh because that's where all the top players want to play. And um, they put Rex and I on the same team. I still didn't know who Rex was until the All Star game. You know, I just thought I just thought Rex was just a, just a regular baller. But it was me, Rex, Steve Bardo, who I played with at, at Illinois, uh, a couple more guys, and you know when they when they named the 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 All Star team at the end of the camp. Uh, they said, and the third ranked player in the nation, Rex Chapman. I was like, for real? That's the guy I've been playing with all week. <laughs> I had no idea who Rex was. So uh, I know. I was the very last name that they called for the All Star game. And mm-hmm. that's that's when I got on the map, you know. And you know, right after right after I came back from five star, I had all kind of schools calling me and everything. Not Kentucky or anybody like that, but you know. I had I had a, I had a lot of intention, and, and Rex has a lot to do with that because we played well together. Oh man! Well, I know this. The Kendall Kendall was kind of a late bloomer, and and you know there was so much talent in Chicago and in mm-hmm. that area that you know you can't. We all know you could essentially take a make a McDonald's team out of Chicago, New York, <laughs> and Philly every year, uh, but we didn't know that when we were young. Um, so my first uh, experience watching Kendall was he was just, well, a conscientious defender. And I think that that's the thing that really 
kind of probably put him on the map was that yeah. he'll go out there and guard you at six three, six four, six five, and was you know didn't take a play off. So he Kendall was kind of different. I built my confidence offensively that's just the way I was wired and Kendall did it the other way and once his offense caught up to his defense my gosh he was he was off and running yeah. thanks Rex. Uh, thanks yeah you know it it in order in order to play at, at Illinois and, and also at my high school my coaches just said you got to defend if you want to get on the floor and that's how I had to make my bones so to speak i had to defend first i had to learn that first and then my offense like you said late bloomer I, it came on later on you know mm -hmm. and, you know went on uh, to to illinois and you know my freshman year didn't play that much sophomore year started sparingly i remember missing seven three-point shots at, at university of iowa lou henson taking me out of lineup i lost my starting position then wow. they had uh, they had marcus liberty who is from Chicago. Y'all had a squad, a squad. Yes, you did. Yeah, so so Marcus Marcus was coming in that year, and I knew he was coming in, and he, you know, number one. And he was all Mister Everything, right? He yeah, was he supposed was to be the next. Yeah, right. He was so on the were, Sports Illustrated cover at one point or something. Yeah, yeah right. he was. He was not just the best of the year. They were saying he's the best to come out in a few years. Right, yeah, right. In which he was, and but you know, I knew he was coming in. And everybody was saying, well, Kendall's probably going to be put on the bench. I was like, fuck that, man. So <laughs> put in the work. I put in the work over the summer, man. And I came back. I thought when I came back after my sophomore year, you know, my junior year, I thought that I was the best player on the team before the wow. season. And, and and Nick was on that team. Nick Anderson was on that team, too. Yeah, and back. see, Nick, Nick was Nick was like the one of the first guys that I played against um, that – you know, he was kind of a grown man at, at age 19. He could post up and he, but he, he gave me fits. Uh, Rex, you know, the first, first, first sixth grade. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. He, he was a grown man. Um, so, you know, it's not like you, I, I hear you talking and saying, you know, I missed seven threes. Coach took me out of the lineup. That's just so it, it's, it's, it's great to hear because it's refreshing. It lets you, it makes us all remember that, Hey, you know, we were, we were not always up here. You know, you had to take your lumps and you, but you, you know, I, I wonder what that was like for you. You're playing on a great team. You know, you're taken out of the lineup. Your confidence has to be shook. Mm -hmm. um, how, how were you able to hang in there and, and, and survive that? My, my dad, because, um, you know, after when I knew Marcus was coming, and when I when I was taken out of the lineup, you know, I thought um, when, when maybe I should transfer because the future probably won't be won't won't go well for me here. So my dad told my dad I was thinking about transferring. He was like, "Nah, son, we don't do that. We don't run. So mm. you're gonna you're gonna have to." And these were his exact words: "You better stay down there and be a star among stars." So wow. that's what I said. That's what I said. That's when I reached the okay. Fuck that. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. You know, that's, that's a, like a, a moment you can absolutely look back on and go, yeah. this was the moment because you could have done two things, run or accept the challenge and be great. And you yeah, did you, it right then. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's why, you know, when I see all these kids in the transfer portal, they just running, man. Yeah. You know, they, they're not staying there and they're not, they're not, you know, gutting it out and getting better because they don't know. They don't know wherever you go, there you are. You know, if you go yeah. to the next, I had the same problems. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. And then, and then it was, you'd have to wait out a year. It was, yeah. a, it was a lot worse then to just go someplace, you know, and then there you'd be another year removed and mm -hmm. probably not with the talent that you were with. So you weren't getting as good every day. That was the moment. That was the moment you became the, what we knew as Kendall Gill. That's, that's right. great. It was the pressure of Marcus Liberty coming and, and you didn't run, you accepted it. And that motivated you. How great is that? Oh man. It, it motivated me. I, I mean, I had another another teammate called Irvin Small, and he used to say, "You mm -hmm. got to you got to hoop while the hoopers are asleep," and that's exactly what I did. While wow. they were sleeping, I was hooping. I was working on my game, and that's how I was able to make the big jump from my sophomore year to my uh, to my junior year. And that's the year we went to the Final Four. And the another T-shirt, another yeah. T-shirt. You got to hoop while the hoopers are asleep. We're coming yeah, out with a good T-shirt go. line from this. Uh, 
All yeah, right, good. Yeah. Uh, um, we just had Timmy Hardaway on, and he he was it it, it kind of rings similar. I was telling him that, you know, as like, a, you know, a McDonald's player or whatever, you can go out there and Buffalo guys sometimes into not playing hard. But mm -hmm. there's always a Tim Hardaway who didn't make the McDonald's game or a Kendall Gill who yeah. didn't make the McDonald's game. And I want to know, Kendall, how much that um, something like that motivated you seeing oh, other I, guys I, that you you knew you were as good at, yeah, look, look, if right, not better. Right. That, that, that's perfect. That's a perfect segue into to what I'm about to tell you because okay. Bill Henderson, who was on the McDonald's All American team with you, yep. Bill and I were really good friends. We played in the same conference in high school. Skinny, skinny Phil, right? Skinny, Real skinny. Yeah. Real yeah, skinny. Yeah. Phil passed away a few years ago. But yeah, went to Duke, right? Ended yeah, up going to Duke. Duke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, went to Duke. But he was named to the McDonald's All American team. And we were in the same conference. I got player of the year over him in our conference. I got player player of the year over him in uh, in the the area in which we live. I, I beat him in the Big Dipper tournament, mm -hmm. uh, and you know then when he got McDonald's All American, he called me. He was like, "Hey man, I got named to the team. Did you did you?" I was like, "Nah, I didn't get named. Uh... I got named to the to the Harold's Chicken All American team." <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so fast Man. forward. So fast forward, like four years. My senior year, when I get named to the UPI uh, All American team and the AP All American team, he calls me, and then he says, "Hey, man, I just got named to the Harold's Chicken All American team. What did you do?" <laughs> 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 and, we started, and we started laughing, man. You know, that's good. Circle, man. But that's so good. But it motivated me, man. You know, yeah. you know knowing that here's a guy who I had competed with, who I beat, who, who got, you know, the accolades, and I didn't. But you know, sometimes it's good to always be the underdog because it always motivates you to do even more than what you're capable of, you know. So and then you came back, and then that season, you guys had a you had a squad and a really really great season all the way to the final four. What did that feel like? You know, playing with with it. Plus, I noticed that every player on the team besides Rodney Jones was was an Illinois guy. Rodney Jones yeah. was Philly. I wow. mean, you guys must have played with each other wow. growing up. There had to be some rapport with a lot of them already. No. Oh well, yeah, yeah. We we all knew each other from from playing with each other since we were twelve years old. You know, and, wow. and Rodney Jones, Rodney Jones, he was from Philly, but. He really wasn't eligible to play that year. So we were all from the state of Illinois, even the walk on Wow. Wow. The state of wow. Illinois. And um, that was a true Illinois team. Uh, I felt like we were the best team in the country. Um, you know, when we lost to Michigan in the final four, I did not watch that game until I, I retired from the NBA. I just couldn't watch it. You know, I don't believe it. Yeah, it hurt, it hurt that much because I knew we were better than everybody else. They just happened to catch us on an off night. You know, and uh, last second shot too. It was like last second was, shot, yeah. And I, you know, and, and I and I still think about that all the time. You know, I know you competitor, do. Competitor, competitor. Yeah, and and uh, you know, I had a, I was in a state championship game against Marcus Liberty in King High School. Uh, I came up short with that, and I came up short with uh, the final. How how, un, how 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 crazy was it? Though that that team, you know, you got a suburban team, uh, rich high school, rich central, um, rich central. Yeah. Um, how how odd was it that you guys even made that run and got to the got to the final? Well, you know, it, it really we expected it because we were much like the final line that team. Nobody was really tall. I was the tallest person on the team at six okay. four, and we played we played fast, we played hard. Uh, teams weren't used to us uh, being the way that we were. And, and, and a lot of guys don't know that even though we were a suburban team, most of those guys were from the city because we just moved okay. out. There. <laughs> we just moved out. Right. To the <laughs> <laughs> so we had that player, the city flavor, you know, but we ended up playing Marcus Liberty and those guys in the championship round. And, you know, you guys know this. It was my fault that we lost. And here's the reason. I didn't know until I, I until years later, uh, 
even when I was in the pros, like game, games that I lose that are significant games, I can't watch them. So I watch them years later. So even the state championship game, I watched it when I got in the pros. I was, I called my brother up. I was like, you know, man, I, I got to apologize to you. He says, why? He says, because I was playing the wrong fucking defense the whole game. And I let this guy score 18 points. That's why we lost the championship. You know? And dude, I'm so with you. I, I, I get it. We, we, my senior year, we lost uh, to our arch rival on a last second shot. Uh, and I still, I never, I never watched it till I was long finished playing uh, yeah. in the NBA. And when I finally did, I was like, this is completely my fault. <laughs> All of it is my fault. If I had just played you know, harder on four more possessions, just standing yeah, around yeah. most of the time. You don't, we didn't know how hard you could play at that yeah. time. Right. Yeah, we didn't know. And yeah. so, but I, I feel you. It's just, it, I'll wake up some nights and be like, damn, I can't believe we lost that game. No, <laughs> no high school I game. The same, I feel the same way, man. I can see Sean Higgins getting that rebound over Nick and putting it, you know, and I wake right. up. My wife was like, what's right. wrong? I was like, ah, oh, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> they had a squad too, though. They had a squad, Glenn and Ramil, those, they those guys. They did, they did have yeah. a squad, but 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 I'm gonna tell you, Rex, we 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 walked them the, the first two times. Oh, y'all we, were good. We blew them out the first good. time we played them, man. You know that's hard. That's hard though, beat a team three that's times. Hard. It's, you know, it, that's it tough. It is, but you know, I think sometimes, and, and I can say this for myself too. Uh, some of the guys don't feel this way that they're on the team, but I wasn't looking at Michigan, you know. And this is this this is a true uh, uh, this is this is true story about how not to look past people. I was looking past Michigan. I was looking at Duke. I'm like, that's who uh, we got in the national championship, yeah. you know. And unfortunately, yep. we didn't get there because I, I mean, I overlooked them. It's better than what. Uh... Larry Johnson said to us, because he, well, he said they had beat Duke the year before, and he said in the championship game, he said it was totally my fault because I just wasn't playing hard. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. He was looking past Duke during the championship game. It's like, <laughs> okay. nothing to look past, Larry. Nothing to look past. <laughs> I can't believe Big L said uh, uh, Kendall, when, uh, you know, I was – I didn't realize you, – you didn't really ever have – you didn't have aspirations really of playing in the NBA until you were in college, probably. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I really did either. Um, I didn't know that that was really something you could, you could do. I lived in Kentucky and we didn't have pro sports and all that. But um, when were you, I guess, when was the first time you realized, even as a kid, that you know, you were better on the kickball field or a better athlete or you you had better touch or when was the first time you really remember standing out, you know, athletically? Yeah, when I was uh, seven years old and I made the uh, Little League team, but you were required to be nine years old to make it. And, you know, the coaches, the coaches had me uh, uh, playing on the south side here at Foster Park in Chicago. Uh, they said, OK, this is the team. You guys got to bring your birth certificate. So the next day I bring my birth certificate. Like, You're too young. You can't play. And I was, I was destroyed, man. Went home oh. crying um, and everything. She's like, well, that's okay. You'll be, you'll, you'll be able to play next year. So that's what I knew, you know, Okay. But, uh, still, still a late bloomer. I actually, Rex, I didn't even, I didn't even like basketball until I moved to the suburbs, man. Really? You know, I was, a, I was a baseball player, football player and a boxer, you know, and then we moved to the suburbs and that's when I first touched the basketball. You know, wow. I was 10 years old. So, you know, I didn't even like it at first. Wow. Well, I, how did you, uh, but we're going to jump back into this, but since you mentioned, I really want to know about the boxing. Usually yeah. that's like a family member gets you into that or something. Somebody that, but like, how did you get into boxing at an early age? Uh, my parents sent us to a daycare center uh, on 83rd and Racine here in Chicago. And at that daycare center, they had boxing. So, you know, I had a coach there. He used to just let me, you know, work pads, work the heavy bag, bag and stuff like that. And then one day, it's this kid, the bully, everybody in the daycare center scared of this kid, right? And he used to walk around with, you know, a scowl on his face. He's bigger than everybody else. The coach put me in with him in the ring. And I was scared as hell. I ain't going to lie, man. I was scared. But then, 
you know, I started working with him and, and, and punching him and, you know, using all the skills that the coaches showed me. And then after that, I fell in love with it. And that's the first time I learned how to deal with bullies. You know, it's because, you know, just because yeah. the guy, you know, walking around like that don't, doesn't mean he's, he's all that, you know. <laughs> but that's where I fell in love that's with great. It. the sport of boxing. Um, when I was a kid, Muhammad Ali lived uh, here in Hyde Park on 47th wow. Street. And I was walking with my grandmother on 79th and uh, Sangam on 79th and Halsted. And Muhammad Ali was standing in front of Walgreens. No, Wool Woolworths. Woolworths. Wool. He was standing in front of Woolworths talking to a lot of people. I looked up at him. I thought I saw God, man. I was like, I that's bet. Ali. You know, wow. it's that, I'm, I'm walking. He, <laughs> and Muhammad, Ali, Muhammad Ali just is right there. You know, wow. So, uh, when that's I just amazing. See Muhammad Ali, then I just start boxing, man. You know, and that's that, that's the way it was. <laughs> Eventually, you you went pro. Yeah, yeah. So I went I went pro after um, I retired from from basketball because I wanted to because I, I really wanted to be a boxer, you know. But then when we moved away to the suburbs, there was no more boxing gym for me. You know, so I had to play baseball, football, basketball is where, where I picked up basketball. And when I retired, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back and do this. And, and I had studied mixed jujitsu and Muay Thai boxing for like six years before I retired. So I, I was already into combat sports. Were you, I, in, were you sparring and, and, and whatnot while you played? Like in the summer, were you still no, doing it? it yeah, in the okay. off season, in the off season when I I was sparring jujitsu and Muay Thai boxing, and I can wow, tell you what, Jesus. Well, the, the first the first time that my my jujitsu coach threw me in uh, with somebody, he threw me in with a girl. She beat the living crap out of me, man. <laughs> I bet she did. <laughs> she she submitted me. She made me tap out. All that. That's why. Wow. Back the sport because she was a lot smaller than me. But wow. after that. I went on and, and after I retired, I, I decided to take boxing seriously, had four fights um, and wanted to fight Jake Paul uh, recently over the last two or three years. But they didn't they don't they don't want to fight me because, you know, they, 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 <laughs> they know don't want it. They, they don't got want a money it. train going right now. And they, they don't got, want they you to derail it. Going. Yeah. So they picked, yeah. So they picked Nate Robinson. To fight and everything, but I, you know, I told Tim Hardaway we will. We Tim Hardaway and I were here in the summertime, and and Tim was saying, "Hey man, Nate's looking pretty good on those pads." I was like, "Hey Tim, do not bet on Nate." I said, "He's gonna get knocked out." I was like, "I love Nate, but he's gonna get knocked out." This kid, Jake Paul, knows a little bit about sweet science. So, and then when he got knocked out, Tim called me. So you were right. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever come to any fisticuffs in the league? Did that ever happen in the 90s? It was a different time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fights, man. You know, we guys that, you know, and I, I've had some interact, some some fights with my friends in the league. Yeah. You know, right. and, you know, I won't say their names, but, I mean, we, we've had uh, a lot of fights. Well, I, I had a few fights in training camps, uh, a mm -hmm. few fights in the back of the locker room, but, you know, we keep that all in-house, you know. Never let anybody outside the family know what you're thinking. <laughs> That's yeah, right. That's right. Hey, hey KG, uh, did you think about going anywhere other than Illinois? Seriously? Michigan State. Okay. Rex, the, the, the night before I picked Illinois, I was going to Michigan State. Really? Michigan State, because I was going to make my decision early. You know, back then, we can make it early or you make it late. Yep. So, uh, I went to bed, Michigan State. So I'm downstairs, right? I wake up. I go downstairs. I'm ironing my pants for school, getting ready. My brother Keith comes downstairs. And he goes, where you going, man? What is it? And I said, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> that was just it. <laughs> it's just like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I, I'm telling you, That's Judd, so good. Judd Heathcote, who was the coach at that time, he called me. And he's like, you know, you they got everybody going there. Why are you gonna go there? You, you, we have everything set for you here. I'm like, I, I know, coach, but I feel like this is the place I need to be. So, you know, I stuck with it. So, I could see yeah. why I, Judd, Judd Heathcote was, was our assistant coach on the Pan Am team. And I spent, you know, one summer around him. I could definitely see why you would want to go play for that guy. What a, oh, yeah. what a fun, a fun guy, a great coach. Just great, had a great way about him. Yeah. Great, yeah. great way about him and everything. I had a great visit up there. It's just that, 
I don't know, man. I, I just some some told me my intuition said Illinois because I didn't even think about it. I just blurted it out Illinois, and that's where I was going. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Um, what was I try to explain to people? Um, you know, because I'm sure, like you, you get asked once a month anyway. What was it like playing with Muggsy? Um, for people <laughs> you, that don't right. know, like, yeah. For people that don't, I always say I I really do believe Muggs should be in the Hall of Fame. Nobody will ever do what he did at that size, the strength he had. You know, he was like a five three Jason kid. You know, he yeah. was everywhere. Yeah. Um, what what was your first impression? You know, when you got on the court with Muggs in training camp. Well, remember we used to practice at the Grady Cole Center, so yeah, yeah. Got, I held out, and I remember coming in. Oh, that's right. I, I remember coming in late, and. I came to the Grady Cole Center. You guys were practicing. And I, I was in street clothes, so I had to sit out the first practice. But I couldn't believe how fast you guys were, <laughs> particularly Muggsy. Yeah. And the way that he controlled everything. Everybody listened to Muggsy. You know, yep. they, they, you're next, you're like, come on, honey. Come on, honey. <laughs> come on, honey. Just come tell on, us honey. to run, <laughs> urging us to run. <laughs> <laughs> so that's – he he could get you the basketball so well in scoring position. He, he knew how to put it right on you like a great quarterback, you know, so that you could score. He wouldn't give it to you too early, wouldn't give it to you too late, would give it to you at the right time. And and, and that's what I enjoyed about him. And also, I, I agree with you, Rex. He should be in the Hall of Fame, you know, yeah. to, to do what he did at such a small size and, and to do it for so long. Yeah. Um, you know, and defensively, I, I can remember him, like, let's take, for example, like guys like Rod Strickland. Mm -hmm. Right, those guys—they didn't really want to handle the basketball against them that much because the Red Muggs was all around you defensively, man. <laughs> you know, he make you get that thing up, and you know, Muggs was just a great guy off the court too, man. You know, yeah. everybody loved Muggs, man. So you know, I, I was always—I always tell people, you know, they—they they, it's like, especially you know, it was a new franchise, and mm -hmm. you know, every year, you know, they were trying to find you know stars and stars and stars. They had the biggest star the whole time in Muggsy, you they know, did. Muggs. We yeah. could go anywhere and we go to the mall. We'd go out to eat. If Muggs was with us, Muggs was the one getting bombarded. Yeah, that's know? right. That's so, right. Hey, look, hey, look. Yeah, where's Muggs yet? Where's Muggs? Yep. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know if you were with us, Rex, but um, because I knew what, what, because I knew you, you got traded to Washington, what, I, yeah. you know, my second or third like, year? I think it was, I think it was your second year, uh, second midway, year. maybe. Second, yeah, midway through the second year, I think. <laughs> okay, well we, well, well, we were in Portland, and Muggsy and Jr. start wrestling. Were you there? Then? Oh, I was there. Yeah, I remember was when there. Muggsy, <laughs> you remember Muggsy <laughs> Before we knew it, Muggsy flipped him and put him on his head. <laughs> and, and, and Jr. couldn't get up. <laughs> Could get up. Oh and my god! Five, five one hundred and fifty-eight uh -huh. pound guy. This 6'9", 265-pound guy. He must <laughs> dominate him. <laughs> dominate him. Wrestling him. Just picked yeah, him up, yeah. dumped him on his head. Yeah. Hilarious. Uh, Kendall, um, you got – I left, and you guys got really good. Got really good for a second, and you won uh, – let's see. You beat, you beat the Celtics in the first round, right? Right. And, but the next season, how would you end up in Seattle? It was my fault, Rex. Yeah. This is one of the biggest regrets of my basketball career. I got two regrets. One, forcing my way out of Charlotte. Two, not signing with the Lakers when I had a chance to, to after they won their first championship with uh, Kobe and Shaq. You know, I could have mm. won two, two more championships with those guys. But I was – and it's, it's totally my fault. I was enamored with, I guess, the stardom of the NBA. People, I understand this completely. Yeah, I really do. I, yeah. When at the time, Kendall, and I, I want to let you finish because I, I think yeah. I know kind of where you're going. But we, Charlotte, was a brand new team. We had no history. It, it didn't feel like an NBA city. It did, and it didn't. And so I know. And you're a city guy. You know, mm -hmm. and so I, I always, I was already gone and I didn't know what was going on, but I also knew, you know, you kind of had a, an urge to be in a bigger market. That yeah. was what I thought. 
Yeah. yeah, I was I was attracted to New York. I was attracted to L.A. I was attracted to, to Chicago. And where did I end up? I ended up in Seattle, you know, which was a great team, by the way. Yep. I mean, yeah, those guys, those guys were great. Um, but I felt like I made a huge mistake because a rising tide lifts all boats. And, and, and with Larry there, with Zoe there, with Dale yep. Mugley all of Johnny Newman, all those guys, we took mm. the Knicks to five games in the second round. Yeah. But I was too young to not understand that, okay, this is the place where you should stay. This is the place where you should be, you know. Um, could there be three All-Stars on one team? Yeah, but I didn't see it that way, you know. Right. I thought, like, I need to get away from Zoe and Larry and those guys right? in order for, for me to, to reach my potential. But that, that was totally – untrue i mean i would have reached my potential had i played with those guys end up in seattle and look i'm not taking anything away from seattle i love playing with we were loaded man to gary yes Payton, we were john kemp dead left shrimp ricky pierce <laughs> and perkins we, we, we won 63 games that next year yeah we were the first number one seed to lose number one seed right that's yeah, right one seed. that's right but when i went to seattle I, I just never felt like I was a Sonic. I always felt like I was a Hornet, you know, and I still played hard and everything. And, you know, I had a, I had a couple good, I had, uh, you know, I had a couple good years, uh, well, one good year up there anyway. And, uh, you know, but. You had good years every year, KJ. Yeah. Every year, but, every but, year. You know, you, when, I never, I never really wanted to sign that contract. As a matter of fact, here's another story. I balked at it and I'm. I'm really? Like, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at home here in Chicago when when everything goes down with the trade and everything, but I, ha I hadn't signed the contract yet. So I want to get away from everybody. And I had a boat out on uh, 63rd Street, so I went out on my boat. My everybody's looking for me. I shut my phone off. Everything okay? I just go out on my boat because I want to. My mom and dad and my brother come looking for me. They find me on my boat, and then, and my dad, like, son, you go back then. It was the, the I guess the deal was seven years, twenty eight million. Which is nothing today. Yeah, um, with, yeah, but at the time it was like two hundred million. You know? Yeah, at, at, at the time, <laughs> yeah. At the time it would have been the highest paid guard in the league. So right, they said, you get the highest paid guard in the league, man. You got to sign this contract. I'm still so I was like, okay, they talked me into doing it. So, but they let me know. You know, they let, I learned something. Follow your intuition. Mm -hmm. You know, and I signed it. I went to Seattle. Did okay. Um, had a great time out there the first year I was there. and uh, But I still felt like I was a Charlotte Hornet, man. Mm -hmm. I still do. <laughs> you, yeah, you know, you played 15 years, uh, seven different teams, but you made, uh, you were named to the 30th anniversary team of the Hornets. How'd that make you feel? Oh, it made me feel great, you know, because, Should. you know, they, they, they recognized, you know, I think that solidified me as a Hornet, you know, yeah. and, and we all want to play you know, for one franchise. I mean, that's like a, the gold standard for a player. Right. You play one franchise your whole career. But, you know, let me know that, that I was part of the Hornet family forever. You know, that the team that drafted me really uh, uh, appreciated what I did for them. Yeah. You know? I know they do. The whole, the whole community does. People don't understand. I, a lot of people wouldn't understand that, you know, we weren't very good. We had talent. It yeah. was a different league back then. Yeah. Uh, when we were playing together, it was packed every single night. It was a great thousand. atmosphere. We yeah. just didn't. We were young. We didn't really know what we had, right? No, we, we were did. young. No, we, we were babies. We um, I want to talk. I want to ask you real quick because, you know, Josh and I are from Kentucky and we talk about our Wildcats quite a bit. What was it like playing for Cal in the NBA? Actually, Cal, I had my best year under Cal. And, I know uh, you had a good year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cal, Carrie Cal, Kittles. Gary Kittles, um, yep. uh, Jason Williams, uh, Michael Cage, Keith, back in those days. Keith Van Horn. Keith Van Horn. Keith, okay. Yeah. That's a squad. Uh, yeah, we, we, we did well. We, unfortunately, we drew the Bulls in, in the last yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, talk about that for a second, Kendall, because we drew the Bulls first round um, when I was in Miami, and we know how that went. Talk for a second about those Bulls teams and just how just how good they were. I mean, 
no, we don't like to, I don't want to say how great somebody else was. They just were. They just <laughs> they were. Know, you know, and and you know, I get into the LeBron James, Michael Jordan debate all the time with my friends. As a matter of fact, they they text me every day something about LeBron James. I said, listen, man, I don't want you guys to continue. Listen, listen, I recognize LeBron James is a great player. Okay. He's one of the all-time greats. But in my opinion, he is third all time. I got Kareem and MJ ahead of him. Here's the reason why I say that, Rex. In order for you to be mentioned amongst the greatest of all time, you got to be in the 6-5 club. That means you got to won six championships and five MVPs. I said, when he gets there, then you come talk to him. Then we can have a mm. conversation. Because there's mm-hmm. only three players to have ever done that. Russell. Jordan and Jabbar. So until he does that, I don't want to hear it. I don't care whether he gets the points thing. Good, good, great achievement. But you know, we can we can we can we can talk about that too because I got my thoughts about that too. But going back to those Bulls teams to answer your question, they were the juggernaut. You know, people say, well, Le- yep. LeBron, Michael Jordan never faced a juggernaut like the Golden State Warriors, or the- well, that's because he was the juggernaut. <laughs> yeah. and, and you look at all That's those right. you all look at all those great teams that they beat uh Rex Cleveland Cavaliers that that was a great Cleveland Cavaliers team. great team yeah the New York the New York Knicks great New York Knicks team the freaking Indiana Pacers and the Davis yep. boys Reggie Miller and all those were great team then you look at Portland with Clyde Drexler and Blazers all Cliffy <laughs> yep yeah Ma- Magic Johnson with the Lakers you know uh Charles Barkley, those were great teams. I mean, the bad yeah. boys, the bad boys, bad boys, the bad boys. He, he eliminated all of them, you know. So that team, you take two of the greatest players. Well, you can add, you can add Dennis Rodman in there as well, but you take all those three and you put them in, in my opinion, which is the most devastating offense in basketball. If it's run correctly, the triangle mm-hmm. offense, you can't beat them. It's like you it's can't. Like, and that offense, Rex, and you, you tell me if you felt this way. Like, it's, it was trying to hit Floyd Mayweather. You know, how you know how Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Where's is? it coming from? Yeah, where is it coming from? You can't, you, I mean, yeah. you can't hit him. And you could not hit the Bulls in the triangle offense. And then you take Michael and Scotty and Dennis. And it just, it was just, you know, I, I wasn't so much, I wanted to play against Michael and Scotty, you know, because mm-hmm. that's, the, those guys were the standard at that time, you know, you, the measuring stick. It was that offense I was worried about. That yeah. often he looks silly, man. Mm-hmm. You know, so, it really would. Yeah. Do you have a Michael? Do you have a Michael story? A lot of guys have come on here and talked about like one story they remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Story. I got, I got a whole bunch of them, but I mean, here's here, here's <laughs> one. We, we're at my house, and and Rex, you remember I used to live down in Fourth Ward. Yeah. So, so, so MJ MJ came to the house one day with Adolf, and, and we, <laughs> oh, you remember Adolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were and we were playing cards. And he came in, they got there about eleven o'clock and we're playing Tom. And I'm <laughs> beating him, I'm beating him out of his money, man. You know. So this guy stays in my house until seven o'clock in the morning until he wins all of his money back. You know, you know how most people Rex me. Hey, Michael Jordan's at my house. Yeah. Most people, I was ready for Michael Jordan to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Dude, no, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with that, you. Uh, that lets you know how crazy of a competitor he was. He wouldn't leave until yeah. he won. Oh, yeah. He, I don't know if I could have asked him. Do you have a uh, Rex talks about some, uh, and we ask guys a welcome to the NBA moment where you were, you know, you had a great rookie year. You you came in on fire, but do you have a time when you came in and you were like, wow, this is okay. This is the NBA. When um, I forget the, the, the guy's name is uh, 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 no, you know I, that not that story. Here, here, here's when the Rex the first time my rookie year we went to L.A. Okay, and you know I, I had been around MJ here, up here in Chicago, so I wasn't you know in, in awe of MJ. I, I I'd seen a few things, but I never seen Magic Johnson before. <laughs> when Magic Johnson ran out of that locker room. When we were at the forum, he looked like Ty Mack. You remember the movie, uh, The Last Dragon, Ty Mack, when he had the glow around him? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Magic Johnson looked just like that to me. I could I couldn't believe how big he was. Yeah, was, right. No way. I was like, I seen him on TV for so many years, but I couldn't believe how big Magic was, man. Yeah. And, and the control he had over that Lakers offense, and you know the way that they, the way that they respected him and everything. That was like, okay, I'm I'm really here now. That was yeah. you. You make a great, uh, great point. I remember playing them my rookie year when, when Kareem, Kareem was. It was his last year, oh, so they, okay. they they weren't they weren't you know really great at that point. They were still really good, but they had Worthy, AC, Magic, Byron Scott, and Kareem, and their spacing was yeah. such that, it, like you talked about Floyd Mayweather, you're just like. <laughs> Who's rushing into the post? Because they just picked out the mismatch they wanted to. Yeah. And uh, but it was I was like, holy shit, this is the Los Angeles Showtime Lakers. Yeah, that's right, man. That's right. I, yeah. mean, I, I tell you, I, I told I told Magic that story when he was here for the All-Star game a couple of years back about how in all I was of him the first time I saw him. You know? Yeah, shoot. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right. I know we can talk to you all day. I, I want to get we asked two questions to wrap things up. Usually uh, what's your favorite movie, KG? Mo' Better Blues. Mm. Okay. Okay, Spike. <laughs> okay, Spike. Mo' Better Blues, man. You know what? You know what? Because, I, like, I'm, I'm a city guy. Mm -hmm. I love jazz like that. And and Bleak was sort of like yep. I, had the, I had the same type of personality. You know, I used to be a player back in the days. <laughs> <laughs> but, love it. But I'm, I love it. I'm that way, boy. You, hey, Rex, you wouldn't believe it. I got. I believe it. I believe it. Hey, hey, if mugs, if mugs can settle down, anybody can settle down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so the, he, that character was was so me, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and I love the storyline of I, I can love see it. Washington and all those guys. So, yeah. what about uh, front row center? to see any singer, a group, a speaker, a sports, uh, anything you want, front row, center, dead or alive? Prince. Prince. I saw Prince um, a couple of times here in Chicago. Man just put on a performance. Yeah. Three and a half hours straight, and mm. you were on the edge of your seat. Every, every song, every time, every... You know, and then when I, play, I played a, a season in Minnesota, I got a chance to meet him, you know, nah. and, uh, you know, it was just just powerful, man. I mean, his yeah. presence, aura, yep. you know, so Prince would be that guy. All right. KG, great answer. KG, thanks for doing this, brother. You got to come yeah, back man. and do it again. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, I had no idea you were in Brooklyn, man. <laughs> I'm in Brooklyn. When you come through, let's get together. I will. You know, when I live, when when I played for Jersey, I lived on 43rd, 11th Avenue for six years in Did Manhattan. You? Yeah, I didn't okay. live in Jersey. You know, All right. City guy, bro. <laughs> All right, bro. Much love, KG. All right, man. Kendall Gill. What, what about that, Josh? This brings me back, man. Just yeah, brings right. me back, you know. I, if I'd known then that I'd be on some... <laughs> Thing called a podcast with that. Rex Chapman and Kendall Gill. I've been like, what do you mean? I can't. It just brings me back. What a good dude. Yeah, good guy. So he was, uh, um, Kendall always carried himself um, very maturely. He, you know, he wasn't, he didn't joke around and play around a lot. He was about his business and he had other interests. And I think that that, um, you know, it kind of threw people. Most most athletes, professional athletes, anyway, are pretty one dimensional. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Kendall was not. He had other interests. He was a boxer. I mean, when you've boxed and sparred and whatnot, there's probably little else that will scare you in in sports, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once you know you got that in your bag, right? Yeah, that's right. why I ask. Like, if you ever, you know, people are like, what are you doing? It's that, that, that. Ooh, sorry, yeah, Kendall, right. <laughs> because once you've mastered the sweet science, you're a problem. Yeah, exactly. I, I remember uh, one day a teammate got in a fight. I won't tell you. I'll tell you the teammate. I won't tell you who he got in a fight with. But um, people were constantly always, it, it, any Hardaway could get under, under people's skin. Opponents, teammates from time to time. And 
And every now and then somebody might just square up with Penny. Well, someone squared up with Penny one day in practice and he he dropped he dropped a great big guy that can fight with a combination where we all went, oh shit, he can box. <laughs> and <laughs> Red flag. Whew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good uh, to know. Good to know. But yeah. So, you know, because most guys, you know, I, if I fight you, I'm not going to box you. I'm probably going to tackle you and swing wildly and all of that right, shit. No, right, Penny, right. Penny knew space and distance and he could do it all. Uh, but anyway, uh, you want to do this again next week, Josh? I sure would, Rex. Let's do it. Well, that was Kendall Gill, episode 73. Meet us back here next week for another episode of the Rex Chapman Show with Super Josh Hopkins powered by BasketballNews.com.